Hi guys and welcome to another Solana tutorial. In the last tutorial I said that we're going to start doing some programming here. However, it seems that I lied. Here we're actually going to be setting up our development environment. Now, I built my environment on top of the Docker container system. This allows for easy switching out of containers in case if you need to change your development environment. In case if you do something bad to your development environment, you can also just throw out the old container image, download it again, restart it, that sort of thing. Now, Dockerization technology works similar to virtual machines. However, there is a difference. When in the virtual machine, you actually assign RAM and CPU to your virtual machine. In Docker, containers use your host machine resources, RAM, CPU, everything that you have available. You actually can assign how much of it it should be able to use it, uh, but it is not really necessary when you're doing any sort of development. Um, so let's get started here. Over here you will need to install your Docker, uh, docker.io or Docker desktop. In my case I am running Ubuntu Linux, I just have the Docker set up, so if I run Docker PS it lists the containers that I have running right now. Uh, so there are some containers that I was uh, testing out before, I don't really worry about those. Uh, the idea is that when you have a Docker container you can have a Linux image inside it with all the packages and all the dependencies that you need. So it, it solves the it does not run on my computer issue. It should run the same on Linux, Windows or Mac machine as long as you have Docker installed and you simply download and run the image. Okay, so without for any further ado, let's actually get started with uh, environment setup. I already have the Docker environment set up on my computer. Uh, you can just look it up in the Docker website how to get yours set up, whether you're running on uh, Linux, Windows, or Mac. And then once you're done, you can should be able to use the command line to, to control your Docker containers. Okay, so now I'm inside of my development directory. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to GitHub and get my repository here that I created specifically for this purpose. So it's at my username here, Solana Local Env. I'm going to go ahead and get it cloned into my computer. As you can see here, there is some tutorials here on what to do. If you want to get it running, it's fairly straightforward. Let's just get this copied and uh, go into git clone. Install this. So on the local env, list it, there it is, Let's change into it. And uh, here we have all the files that are in this repository. Let's go code dot to run Visual Studio Code. You can run a different uh, ID if you want to. Uh, however, I've been using Visual Studio Code for quite some time now, and I'm kind of used to all of its uh, extensions that I need. Okay, here we have, let me just reopen this file. This is Docker Compose YML file, basically configuration. If you already know what a Docker is, uh, you would know that usually to run Docker containers, you would need to add a lot of different flags to it, like which ports you want to expose, what environment variables to use, that sort of thing. Docker Compose makes this whole ritual a whole of a lot easier. So what we can do here is define everything that we need, like our volumes, bind mounts, our restart condition, our command to run when the container starts up, the exposed uh, port. Uh, actually, I would strongly recommend that you do uh, look up Docker Compose. You will need to, you will actually need do both Docker and Docker Compose for this tutorial series. Now. Over here in this YML file, we have two services defined. Solana Dev Env. This is our main thing, where we are main service, where we're actually going to be doing our development. This is the environment which has Ubuntu installed in it, as well as Linux distribution. Uh, it's linked to these directories here, so you can see App Dev, App Dev, Dev Env, Dev Env, and these like three locations in Dev Env that we are linking to, and also a startup shell file. It's over here. Uh, so what it does is it sets the npm registry to our localhost uh, 4873 that's our verdacho right here and yarn configuration for npm registry server as well this is uh, if we're actually going to be doing any kind of npm uh, setup any kind of development of npm packages inside of our container 
Okay, so without further ado, let's actually run this thing. Uh, let's start up the containers. And that's it. So to start up the containers, inside the same folder as you have your docker compose.yml file, we run docker compose up, oops, come on, dash d. Dash d for daemon run so that we don't get our command line all locked up. Let's run this thing. And in my computer, the two containers started right away. On yours, if it's your first down time downloading these, it will actually take some time because if you look in the Docker Hub right here, one of them is Anchor and the other one is uh, Verdacho. Verdacho is actually getting pulled from its original repository. On the Anchor, if you go into Tags, let me see which one is here. So Image Anchor 0 0.24.2. So 0 0.24.2 right here, you can see it's 1.1 gigabytes. That's the size of the all the packages and the Linux distribution that you need to run the environment. Okay, so now once it starts up and runs, you can do Docker PS to make sure that it is actually running. So here it is. Uh, we have two of the containers that we started, the Verdacho and Solana Dev Env. Uh, they're running fine. If they weren't running, there would have been something coming up, like restarting one second past, like the, an error coming up, basically. So in our case, it's running fine. Now, the next thing that I need to do is get inside the Solana Dev Env container. To do that, it's docker exec-ti, and then we do Solana dev env and then what do you want to get in there with so i want to get in there with the bin bash and i'm inside the bash shell now inside of the container so if i list what's in there i am basically at the root of the operating system inside the container right now this test ledger directory here is where when we run our Solana test validator, the Solana test validator is going to save its files. And it is actually linked to a directory outside. So that's called the bind mount. So if I list it, cd into dev env and uh, cd into validator. Uh, there it is, the test ledger. So if I ls list what's inside the test ledger, right now it's empty. But however, when we run our validator, there will be files here. This is uh, a bind mount so that in case if you need to erase your container, need to re uh, like reinstall it again, because say you messed something up inside the container environment, you will be able to switch out the container, but your files the ones that you worked on, the kind of files that you submitted into your Solana development, uh, Solana test validator environment, they will remain here. Same goes for your development environment as well. So if I go back and back again and uh, list here, there's another one which is called appenv. This directory right here will store your applications. This is where you should store your applications, actually. So here on the root, you see here app dev, right? App dev and then app dev right here on your main system. OK, let's try and start the Solana test validator because I want to show you something important, which has to do with CPUs. As you can see, aborted core dumped. Now, what is this thing? Let's log it. And here we go. Incompatible CPU detected missing, missing AVX2 support. Now, this is common if you're running off of a bit of an older CPU. And there's another problem which can cause you a lot of headache. Uh, the CPU in which you're running may not actually be able to compile your version so i was trying to compile it on two different cpus i was trying to compile it on fx 8350 amd which is a bit older uh, version of amd processor and it failed to compile it and when i did compilation on xeon e31230 version 2 it compiled just fine so after i compiled it 
just fine. I actually compiled also a Docker container with that NoAVX to support and upload it into GitHub. So now whoever has these issues with this CPU problem can just download the container and you'll be good to go. So let's exit from this container here because we will not be able to run the validator. Now we're on the host. Now let's do Docker compose down to shut down the two containers that we started up, the Verdacho and Solana dev env. And now we're actually going to change something in our YML file. So instead of doing this anchor 024.2, I'm going to comment this line out and uncomment this one. Anchor 0.24.2, no AVX2. So this is Anchor and Solana and everything put together with without the need for AVX2 support on your CPU. Let's save this compose file and go back here. Uh, now, before we actually start it up again, I want to take a look if the if anything changed inside this test ledger. So uh, let me go into another tab of my terminal. Uh, let's list what's inside the dev env uh, mm, validator test ledger. Yeah, as you can see, it actually already put something in there. Uh, so we're actually going to remove all that because we don't really want anything sitting there. I'm not going to remove the directory itself, just the contents of it. Oh, yeah. One thing to consider also, inside the container when you run it, it's going to be on the same... Whatever files you create inside the container are going to have the user permissions of whatever the user you logged in under the container. So when we log into the Solana dev env container, we are actually under root user. And uh, it has access to, this root user has access to the whatever's inside that container and also uh, these bind mounts that we defined. So this startup sh, app dev, dev and like all this stuff, it, it has access to these files. It does not have access to anything else on your main system, just these bind mounts. But keep in mind that the user is different or it can be different. Most of the time it is. So I'm actually going to use my uh, super admin privileges and to delete all this uh, this uh, stuff here. Now if we list, there's nothing here. Okay. This is another way also to clean out your uh, ledger altogether. So to completely remove it and start over when you're doing your development. Okay, let's continue with our environment setup. I switched over from the regular anchor to anchor no AVX2. So I'm going to run docker compose up dash D again. That's not cockers docker, please. Compose up. I already downloaded this container as well. So in your case, it might be downloading. Now let's do the same thing, docker exec. And then bin bash. I'm going to clear my terminal. So we're inside the docker container once again. If I list what's inside the test ledger once more, there's nothing in it. Let's try running Solana the uh, test validator again. And this time it's all good. We're working, we're doing our thing, and it is producing the blocks as it's supposed to. Control C to stop and clear. If I list what's inside that test ledger again, we can see that all, all our files are here. Now to remove stuff from here, as you can see, inside the container I'm considered root user. So I'm going to remove uh, 
whatever is inside the test ledger. I actually need to put the RF flag to remove the folders. And if I do LS again, there's nothing there. So uh, the all of the ledger has been removed. Okay, so this part is done. Now the next part that we need to do to get our development environment working is actually to hook this uh, Visual Studio Code into our Docker container as well. I'm pretty sure the other IDs have the extensions to do this as well, um, but I'm going to show how it's done with Visual Studio Code. So here we have, as you can see, this Docker thing, this Docker tab. In order to get it, you actually need an extension. This right here, Docker extension, you will need to install it. This in return will give you this tab. So we go to this tab right here and then look for our container in the sidebar. Here is our Solana local env. This is based on our connection between these two containers. We have two containers running in this uh, Docker Compose YML. Here is the Verdacho. Here's the anchor. We're interested in the anchor. So right click, attach Visual Studio Code. It's going to take some time to open your remote. As you can see in the bottom left corner, it is loading. After a few minutes, maybe one or two minutes of uh, installation, you will have this configuration. You're inside the container. So now I could open the folder that I want to use. In this case, uh, for this particular setup, you should go up a level and then into app dev. And then you could actually create another directory for whatever project you're working on. Uh, during this tutorial, I'm just going to go into app dev and select that as my directory here. As you can see, we already have this git keep here. This is from the original repository. Now, if I open my terminal, the terminal is also linked inside of the Docker container. So if I go uh, back to the root level and list, these are the same directories as we saw when we were logged inside the Docker container in our terminal here. So if I list them here, you can see they're same directories from app dev all the way to the wallet over here. So let's also take a look what sort of packages we have in this development environment. So I will do Rust C version. So here we have 1.60.0 Solana version. A one ten point eight, and then we have npm dash dash version, and you see eight eleven node dash dash version. Okay, cargo also one point sixty point zero. I think I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah. So we pretty much have everything to do the development of our applications inside this Docker container. Okay, so this is our development environment set. From here, we can do development inside of this Docker environment, and it will be saved inside the app dev directory, which we have uh, right here. Right now it's empty. There's only a git keep in there. But as we start working on our project, there will be more and more files appearing in this place. Okay, guys, I hope you like this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And in the next tutorial, we're actually going to start programming for sure. So thank you very much and have a good one. Bye-bye.